like to get in on this, it's not like a million dollars, it's a couple hundred dollars, but like you said, mm -hmm. someone will spend $250 on sneakers, but you could take $200 and buy a share of stock yep. and flip your money and not even put the lack of knowledge in there. Yep. Well, do you, do you think that is, do you really, I, do you really think that is done intentionally? That's, that's, that's a question. Say so, it again. Do you really think that this is done intentionally? I about don't think so intent. I think it's, they don't care. Right. From, the stand, that's, that's what, that's what I'm From a about. standpoint of education? Right. They don't care. Right. You know why? Care. Because, you know, most of the time, I, this is what I think, is that, you know, they don't know. Mm -hmm. They don't know. They automatically think that we should know. Mm -hmm. That's part of it. That's part of it. They automatically think that we that's should know. Just like when you say, oh, man, you know, you know just, they, like they say everything is a race car. You know, always throw everything in a race car. Right. But, you know, they don't know because they don't know what it is to be black. It's like we don't know what it is to be white. Right. You know? They don't know what what we went through, right. our ancestors went through. Right. They don't know that, you know, we was... Um, they may all like they assume. Right. That you know these things. Yeah, assume. Mm -hmm. They don't know that we mm -hmm. were, um, you know, we were lacking. They didn't want to give us all this stuff back in the days. We were lacking. And all this. We didn't get all this education. Yeah. So the, the generation now, they don't know. Yeah. It's funny. Uh, well, it, it, I, I think... It, it, um, if I can interject for a little bit, um, I think it's because as individuals, we become very selfish and materialistic. Mm -hmm. And because of, like I said, we're buying the Mercedes Benzes, we're buying the Jordans, we're buying the jewelry, we're, we're getting, uh, acquiring things that have no uh, return of, of, of value uh, to it because we want to be able to say, I own this mm -hmm. Mercedes Benz, I'm driving this. But mm -hmm. really, you still have a banknote. Um, uh, attached to the car and, you and if you look at um, and, and, and I hate not to put everything in a race but the race is heavily involved and I'm going to give you a prime example Tulsa, Oklahoma with Black Wall Street you had 10,000 sure. people of color who were pastors, engineers doctors, lawyers um, any through the full gamut of the workforce and they established I think it was Greens, uh, yes. Greenstown, and they established a community yes. and were thriving. Yes. And then they said that um, a young gentleman went into the elevator and yes. said something to a 17-year-old uh, Caucasian girl, and she oh, cried, yes. uh, and they massacred the entire town. Yes. Now, yes. those 10,000 people, uh, I think it was 300 was killed, 10,000 were displaced, uh, displaced and they burned and looted their businesses, their homes, and their everything because they were upset and jealous that they were thriving. Yes. So not only did mainstream America rob, kill them, and destroy them, they also had uh, planes dropping bombs on them and the National Guard with it. So my question would be, we always say, well, if we are to thrive as a people, every time we go to thrive as a people, somehow, some way, we get behind the eight ball or we're destroyed or something goes on and if you stand up for your people like uh, Colin Kaepernick they're taking his money from him and taking all these in, uh, different things from him and um, endorsements and everything else now he can't make it because he stood up for his people so to speak now when we say we need to thrive as a people and we need to come together and we need to do this and we need to do this we're ostracized now why is that well, we, we want to say it's not racial, but yeah. it, it, it is because look at the other guys who are out there who are on the networks and former NFL players and athletes mm -hmm. who will defame Colin Kaepernick for doing what he did to, to try and stand up for injustices. Mm -hmm. And then look how they suffer. So they'll tell us, oh, you can't take a knee. You can't take a knee, but we're supposed to survive in this world and be able to be an entrepreneur and you can't take a knee for an injustice for a flag that's representative of not what America is supposed to stand for because it endorses the killings of slaves? I think too that um, you're talking about, everybody mentioned materialistic. And when I see, and this is a bad analogy, yes. but what I, and, and I'm a finance major, so, mm -hmm. but I look at it as a, it's a, almost like a, a bad analogy that I'm gonna use. But I have a black lab at home, and we keep him in a gate, caged, because he's wild. He runs around in the backyard and everything. But in the house, because he's so active, we keep him in a big dog cage. 
So when we let him out, he goes crazy because he's been in a cage all day. Mm -hmm. So I think about generations of slavery and oppression and everything to our people. And so what happened is we take everything away from them. Mm -hmm. You don't allow them to have these good things in life that you see other people with on TV and that, and you don't know how they earned it, you know, whether it's investments or not. Right. So then when they get out, of course. They, I want, I want, I want, I want, I want, and they live, and they go above their means of course. because of the oppression. So I use it as almost like that animal out of a cage, not saying we're animals, I but that saying. person out of a cage, like, I gotta have this, I gotta have that, I gotta have this, I gotta have that, because you see all this in front of you and you're oppressed back. So when you get that income tax, you're not thinking, hey, you know what, I can invest in, Whatever yes. you're thinking, I gotta have those. This I gotta have these material material things that serve me no value because I haven't had and I've been waiting for it. Yes. So I think we have to also understand. You bring a point about mental conditioning, but that discipline yes. that's saying, you know what, I want that, but I can't afford it. Yes. And it's all this is analogy that if you can't pay cash for something, yes. don't buy. Yes. If you have to go into a credit card, yes. you don't need it unless yes. it's a, a survival situation. Yes. But to the point you say, oh, I like, now I use a woman thing. Oh, I like this handbag. If it's not something you can buy cash, then you shouldn't be purchasing yes. it. Mm-hmm. Because yes. now you're going into a deficit. Yes. You know, with, um, going back to what you say, uh, Brother Ann said about Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yes, you know, we thrived and uh, we succeeded and we had, you know, and we knew, we know from that example that we can do it. Yes, sir. And that right there is generational. So the, yes. for the kids there, they know that this can happen. So the question then would be this, so, so what happened? Mm-hmm. You know, and what be- bewilders me is that, you know, we were margin, and we was actually margin for people to take our money. You know, we were sitting, kneeling, and we wanted people, restaurants, to take our money when they, want, they didn't want to accept it. Instead of saying to ourselves, okay, you don't want to take my money? All right, my man Elliot here, he sells hamburgers at his house. I'm going to go give him my money. Or Brother Ann, he, he makes fish. I'm going to go give him my money. Mm-hmm. But yet, we're still margin mm-hmm. for somebody else to take our money who don't want to take our money, mm-hmm. which makes no sense to me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's what's happening today. Yes. And, and to me, that's, that's part of wanting to be accepted by your oppressor so bad that we hate ourselves as as individuals and collective uh, collectively because we don't have that sense of pride for ourselves we want to be accepted so bad that we will marginalize our own issues our own finances our own culture our own everything to be accepted to a place where we may not uh be accepted for one reason or the other, which is why I believe that we have to support our own yeah. entities. We have to have our own structures. And if we don't, and it's not a racial thing, because if you look at the Chinese community, we talk about this a thousand times. You go to Chinatown in every state, yeah, there's a Chinatown. Chinese. There's a Chinatown. Every, every state in the world, there's a little Italy. There's an Irish neighborhood. There's a Jewish neighborhood. And they all support each other. So why we don't support our own I think, individual I don't think I think neighborhoods. Our, I don't think that it's lack of support in our own self. I think it's, we don't have, this is my thing. I don't think there's such a lack of support. We don't have the businesses there that we're owning. And I think our neighborhoods are exploited. Like Harlem is exploited. So proud, so Brooklyn now has totally been exploited. Where we can't purchase in our own neighborhoods. We can't buy in our neighborhoods. One, we don't, if we get a loan, it's not going to be big enough to put a Red Lobster there. It may not be big enough to loan a franchise enough to put a McDonald's there. So it's happened and other races have came and exploited the black community because we buy. Well, they didn't exploit it per se because they're going to go and they get those, um, you know, when you come in, you're here, you're new, you get established credit, you get all this other stuff and you're able to, to take care and, and, and secure these so-called loans. However, it's up to us to stop um, being a, a patron to these mm-hmm. certain individual yeah. places. We don't have to go to Red Lobster. We don't have to go to Walmart. We don't have to go to wherever. We can choose to go if we must. But look at uh, Martin Luther King. Not since Dr. Martin Luther King has he shown us about our political power with the economic power that we have when we refuse to turn over our revenue to a certain source that did not want us to use their facilities. And it, you know what, and it goes back to what Lynn started the conversation with, and that is education. We gotta hit the books. 
the reason why we're not understanding these things is because we're not educated on it. And, it. and that was a good question when you posed me. You said, like, is it something that's done on purpose? Not necessarily, but it's not something that they're stopping. And they do understand, like, there's certain things they don't know. There's certain things that I can put out there. Cash itself, you asked, that's a great question. What's the difference between a rich man and a poor man? And they understand, like, give them as much cash as they want. No problem. Because we're going to get it right back. Exactly. 80 athletes, whatever they want. It's recyclable We're going to get it right back. No problem. So that does come down to mm-hmm. lack of education. You know, we do have to understand. Once we, once you have the education and you know what you're doing, it gives you that confidence to say, I'm confident that I only have a dollar. You know, you hear these stories, these legendary stories about these people that make it. As much as you may hate Trump, you hear these stories about, yo, I only had like five dollars in my pocket. For us, it's hard because of lack of education. You have to have confidence in yourself. You have to have confidence. I can really do something with this five dollars. We don't have that. Like I got five dollars, I might as well just go buy a, a beer because if I don't, what am I gonna do? Invest it? That's not coming back to me. But you don't. We don't have that real understanding of. There's one thing to talk. I was talking to somebody about this about the, over the weekend. Talk is what we do. We do a lot of talk. But if you can start to bring that talk into your, re- like you really believe it, I'm telling you, it makes all the difference in the world. You can talk, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you really believe in your heart, Mark, I'm telling you right now, you see this key right here? We can pimp this thing into about 20 bucks. Now, on that note, uh, we're going to get ready to have to go because our time has ended. Oh. And uh, we have to remember uh, my takeaway we are a trillion dollar, yes. uh, trillion dollar dollar industry buying power network however you want to call it conglomerate whatever it is yes and we're being utilized that way and it's just institutionalized slavery the way we're being uh led yes. to be purchasers and consumers yes and it's it's no more than us picking cotton we're picking up those items to purchase to make those industry uh places uh, more rich so we have to change that so that's part of my takeaway so everyone gets a 30 second takeaway and then we're going to have to cut um, like I said you know me I just believe that you know our mental makeup uh, and believing in you know the power of finances believing in what does finances do for us and, I, and I'll give this very very briefly it's such a fine line between financial power and not necessarily flaunting it is it okay to buy that Mercedes Benz to show you know that's some power is that okay yes but you gotta be able to afford it so that's the fine line that you know we we have to tell. Mark, yeah. Um, my takeaway from this is that we need to educate ourselves. I mean, we see the past by uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, um, on Black Wall Street that it can be done. You know, we we need to invest in ourselves, we invest in our kids, we invest in our futures. You know, and that's the only way to be. And my takeaway is that we all bank somewhere, Chase or Bank of America. Walk in there, talk to your financial advisors. They have the information yes. on home ownership, yes. refinancing, yes. how to start a business, how to invest in the stock market. Yes. If you don't seek them out and really ask them basic questions, how do I get started? My advice is to you, before the end of the year, start the new year, walk into your bank and say, tell me what options you have. I don't have a dollar, but I need to make 50 cents. And so you understand what I'm saying? So my point is go in there without any pride and say, what's available for me? And I recommend that for everyone to start the new year. On behalf of Family Community Media, we thank you. We look forward to bringing you again, meeting you again.